He cannot stay away forever. The curate cannot give the sermon forever. No one preaches as Mr. Elgin does. Here is the extract, Mr. Ross. <clears throat> Here this. Enough. About Mr. Elton. Miss Woodhouse. Uh. Miss Smith. Such news. My niece, Jane Fairfax. Miss Woodhouse, Jane Fairfax. She has. Jane has surprised us. She is here. Oh, do come along, we must have tea. It's too thrilling. She caught a bad cold. Poor thing. So long ago as the 7th of November. She has not been well since. And her kind friends, the Campbells, thought she'd better come home and try an air that always agrees with her. I hope that your father is well. Very well. I thank you. She is very sorry to be parted from her dear friends, the Campbells, and Mrs. Dixon, and Mr. Dixon, the most amiable young man who did us so great a service at Weymouth in October. I still shudder to think what might have, if not for Mr. Dixon, with the waves and the water and the sails. Oh, such a charming man. Oh, dear. This is not pleasant. She plans to say three months. We must have you all to Hartfield. Oh. Oh, Mother, do you hear? Miss Woodhouse has invited us to Hartfield! Mother, you must sample the tart. No, I do, I, do, I do not advise the custard. What do you say to half a glass of wine? In a tumbler of water, naturally. <laughs> we shall be seeing Frank any day now, I have, I have no doubt of it. Oh, now, but... Jane, Mr. Frank Churchill is a man much talked about in Highbury. Is he not, Miss Woodhouse? We are all very eager to meet him. He was at Weymouth when Jane was there. <laughs> we are very little acquainted. Frank Churchill was at Weymouth in October. That was the month of his father's wedding. But you must describe him. Is he handsome? Is he agreeable? I believe he is generally thought so. How well prepared this custard is. I must ask your cook for the method.